Hey guys, this is Matt of 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about how to adjust your pH in both soil, cocoa, and hydro and why that is important. Now we already had a video on this a while back, mostly about soil, but well, this is kind of like the version 2.0. Um, just a little bit of extra tips and a little bit of you know conceptual stuff uh, to think about when you're messing with your pH. Um, we're going to throw up a pH chart just to show you real quick the difference between um, soil pH and hydroponic pH. As you can see by the chart, they're extremely different, basically opposite of each other. Um, in a soil garden, we're going to be looking to stay closer to 7.0 pH. 6.5 would be ideal, but 6.2 and below, as you can see, is you're in trouble, especially in flower. Now in veg, you can see that down to around even 5, 6, 5, 7 in a soil pH, could, you could have a very healthy veg plant. You wouldn't know you were in trouble. But as soon as you try to flower that plant, their phosphorus needs go through the roof. And if you can see at around 5.5, 5.6, their phosphorus levels are very low. We need to get much higher, closer to seven, six, eight, six, five at the lowest really, uh, to keep those phosphorus, potassium, calcium levels, things like that high for flower. Um, the way phosphorus shows itself as a deficiency is the large fan leaves at the very bottom of the plant will start to go yellow, dark spots, and then brown, crispy tips. If you've ever had that in flower, um, you're running a little low on phosphorus, and uh, the, a good way to start to see if you were just weren't giving it enough phosphorus, or if your plant couldn't get the phosphorus that it needed, would be to check your soil pH. Um, now, when we're talking about synthetics in soil, uh, there's a little bit of a controversial thing there. From what I can see, and from what we've seen here in the shop, talking to customers and talking to people, if you're running a soilless medium, like a cocoa or a straight pro mix, and you're running organic nutrients, a very organic nutrient line, you are gonna have a better chance at having success running that more like a soil, keeping your pH of your pro mix or your cocoa higher in the mid sixes and closer to seven. If you're running that same cocoa and that same pro mix medium and you're running a synthetic uh, nutrient lineup, it seems to be better to run that pH as if you're running in a soil uh, hydro garden. So closer to five, 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 six, five, seven, as high as up to five, up to six, two at the most. Any higher than that, you might start seeing some issues. So depending on your medium and your nutrients, you're gonna have to go you know, higher or lower uh, to get better results. Uh, so you keep that in mind and whenever you start seeing problems, first thought should be what's my pH? Um, now how to adjust your pH? In hydroponics, it's really obvious. Have a good meter, something like this Guardian, a tri-meter, or just a simple pH pen. Um, those are gonna allow you to test the pH of your nutrient solution as often as you can. Um, the ones that, like the Guardian that are constantly in the solution that are always plugged in are really nice because all you have to do is just peek in your room from a, from a glance, you can see what the pH and the part per million and the temperature is on something like this and you know that everything's running smoothly and you can just go on your way. Um, with something like the pen, you're definitely going to have to get in there, turn it on, dip it in the water, hold it there for a second till you get your reading. Once you get your reading, we're going to use a simple pH up or pH down uh, as our adjustment until we get it into our pocket. As you can see by the chart, um, phosphorus is much more available at low with pHs. Now in veg, we don't need as much phosphorus, um, so you'll probably have good success pretty much anywhere between 5.5 five and 6.2, but in flour, if that pH gets too high, that phosphorus becomes very unavailable, which is a main part of our flouring production. So you're gonna wanna go down to around 5.6, five, 5.7, five, um, as low as 5.5 five in flour. Now you can see by the chart that as phosphorus gets more available, the lower you go, it is almost tempting to run it even lower than 5.5 five to get the maximum amount of phosphorus out of there. But as you can see at the bottom of the chart, the micronutrients become overly available. So you'll end up with necrotic spots, which is dead black brown spots in your leaves. That's a buildup of micronutrients that's actually accumulating in the leaf tissue, causing those dead spots. So going too much lower than 5.5 five can be risky because the micronutrients become overly available and can lead to a micronutrients toxicity, basically. So you're looking to stay in a very tight pocket between 5.5 five and around 5.7, maybe as high as 5.8, and you can drift all the way up to around 6.2 if you need to, um, but then drop it back down. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward in high row. Check the chart out, do your own research and really find the number that you feel like is gonna work best for you and give it a try. That's the beauty of hydroponics. You can set your pH at the drop of a dime to whatever you want and let that ride for a couple days to see how your plants are, are uh, responding to it. The hard row of the two is gonna be soil and I think a lot of soil gardeners don't know the soil pH. It's kind of funny to me because hydro gardeners always know their pH of their water but very few soil gardeners know the pH of their soil. They're both the main source of nutrients for your plants and they're both very important uh, to be in the proper pH with those, with those mediums. 
This is my favorite tool right now uh, on the market for soil pH. This is the Blue Lab soil pH pen. It also does uh, water testing and temperature as well. So you could test your nutrient uh, solution for pH as well as stick this into your soil and test your soil pH with a digital reading, which is really nice. Super easy to calibrate, a year warranty on it, can't go wrong. Highly recommend to be a part of your garden if you're a soil gardener or a soilless gardener. Um, if we find out that this pH has gotten too low, you're going to have first and foremost phosphorus deficiency in flower. If you look at the chart, uh, in soil, the closer we stay to seven, the happier everybody is. The happier our macronutrients are, the more available our phosphorus, potassium, and calcium are, and it's more ideal to stay right around neutral or seven. Six, five is about as low as I go, and I can tell you that if your soil gets in the six, two, or lower range, you will start seeing phosphorus deficiency in flower, which shows itself as large fan leaves, going yellow, brown crispy tips. Um, the flowers themselves will stay pretty healthy, but you'll see that phosphorus deficiency rip through that plant pretty fast as it tries to keep the flowers healthy by using up its own phosphorus reserves. If you test your soil pH with a soil probe and you find out it's low, we do have some cheaper ones. You know, these aren't super accurate, but they will tell you if you're super high or super low. They also make these really simple soil pH test kits that you can put a little bit of your soil in there with a little bit of a chemical that comes with it and some water, give it a shake, the water will change color, and then you can uh, you know, match that color up with the proper pH. Once again, just something that tells you if you're really low or really high. Um, once we find out if we're really low or really high, you're almost always gonna be low in soil. Um, we're gonna wanna try to adjust it. There's only a couple ways to do that. You can water your plants at a very high pH. I've watered plants as high as nine O pH in my life and had no ill effects. That would bring my pH from something like five, eight, six O in my soil up into the mid to high sixes. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay there very well all the time. It likes to kind of drift up and down. So you'll water with a high pH. The soil seems to come up for a couple days and then as it dries back out, it tends to dip back down. It's not the best long-term solution, but it can be something that you can use in a pinch to combat soil pH um, and just water your nutrients or your water at a relatively high pH, 8, 8 0, 8, 5, all the way up to 9 0 I've had success with without any ill effects. The only other way I can think of to really adjust soil pH when the plant is already in the container and in the ground is something like a dolomitic lime or a calcitic lime. Uh, usually you wanna try to find some kind of lime that doesn't have a lot of magnesium um, in it. They're only gonna have a lot of calcium, which is not usually a problem, but the excess magnesium can definitely get out of control with some of the products out there. So try to track down a lime that is low in magnesium, relatively low in calcium if possible. Um, calcitic lime seems to be really good. Dolomitic lime is also really good. The best thing we can do in this situation is to scratch a bunch of lime, um, two to four tablespoons on top of, let's say, a 10-gallon pot, maybe two to three tablespoons on top of a five-gallon pot, and uh, scratch that into the surface of the soil, water the next couple times thoroughly through this container, and that lime should hopefully adjust your pH a little bit higher. It's not foolproof, and a lot of times you'll end up with the top layer of your soil being higher pH the lower layer doesn't seem to swing as fast because the lime doesn't make it all the way down there. So not ideal, but those are the two options that you have. So, you know, and at the end of the day, definitely keep track of your pH, whether it's in cocoa, pro mix, amended soil, or hydro. It has everything to do with the nutrients that you're feeding them being available. You could spend all the money in the world on nutrients. You could feed them perfectly, but if the pH of your solution or your soil is off, none of that nutrients is really available. It will zap your yield, zap your quality, and it's something that you could monitor and maintain relatively easily. So um, definitely keep that in mind. If you ever had any problems and you couldn't pinpoint it, definitely start with what was the pH. Um, that's a really good way to start. Um, all these products are available on our website for testing your soil, testing your water, adjusting those water and soil systems, and, uh, and a lot of info to you as well um, about how to keep your plants happy and keep that pH proper. I hope this video helped you guys out, explained a little bit about uh, pH control, and uh, we'll see you next time.